Hi, I'm James Kearney, and I've been sober for three years now, uh, after a successful detox in 2011, well, 18th of September 2011 to be precise, and I've enjoyed every single minute of it. I grew up in Canley, um, this is uh, a little district in Coventry renowned for uh, its drinking and irish nuts. <laughs> well, I personally know uh, a few people who have died before they've, before they've reached the age of like 50 years old uh, due to drinking, drinking cider, uh, or just generally drinking every day. Uh, in other words, mistreating drink. Uh, that's what I was doing up to the age of 28. Um, the wake-up call was when my kidneys started going. Uh, my my liver and kidneys, the doctors already said that they were very, very bad. And uh, my mum was with me at the time when the doctors said that I didn't have long to live. Uh, I ignored that. I just kept drinking. Um, I started living rough. I was living with uh, a heroin addict. I was uh, taking heroin, not injecting it, just smoking it. I never got addicted, by the way. I did take crack cocaine, I did smoke cannabis, which was bad. Um, um, yeah, my, my health was seriously deteriorating. Um, but I, uh, if anyone asks me now, uh, I still know, obviously know the, um, the effects of drinking and what it could cause mentally and physically. I know that uh, a lot of alcoholics think that if they stop and after the detox they're going to they're gonna feel nervous without alcohol. I believe me, it's you'd feel less nervous if you just stopped, cut it on the head completely than being just... Try an alcoholic can never be a moderate drinker. And an alcoholic can never, ever be a responsible drinker. you got to understand that. People will say to alcoholics that, oh, uh, you should cut down a bit and, you know, drink like I do. Not me, but... And, um, but that's impossible. Uh, that, that's, that's what an alcoholic's dream would be, just to drink the responsible. Where an alcoholic would love to wake up in the morning not needing a drink. But it's, uh, it's, it's not in the books, I'm afraid. It's it's um it's life. An alcoholic is an alcoholic from birth. It's in the, it's a bit like cancer. You're born with cancer. But it's in an alcoholic's genes, it just gradually hits you. Uh midway through the twenties it will just grab hold of you. Unfortunately. Some people obviously who drink a lot can go days, months without drinking and then start drinking again and stop but Alcoholics can't do that, fortunately. Um, for me, I was drinking around the clock uh, when I woke up. Well, I, I had a cider stash next to my bed. It's when I was living next to, in my mum's house. I used to hide it from her and all sorts. Uh, when they were out, I used to run down the shop, get my cider. Um, I didn't care what people thought outside, but my mum and dad, they, they wouldn't accept cider, they knew. What that cider could do to you, but in my mind, cider. I thought my mum and dad were just playing at me, and in fact, they weren't. They were looking after me. Um. Uh, well, if you want any tips on how to stop drinking, first of all, consult the doctor. Go to a doctor. Uh, it's a long process. You have to go through Cas Community Alcohol Service. There you just go to the doctor every week for an hour, talk to them, and uh, one week. You have to um, convince the doctor or the counsellor that you, you are ready to stop drinking. Um, you have to help yourself, you have to meet them halfway before they give you a detox. Because if you show that, oh yeah, you're at the contemplation stage, which is... Um, 
I want to stop, but I don't want to stop. You, you have to be at the determination stage where you, you, you're finally ready just to stop. I.e. you're feeling suicidal over drink, you don't want to drink no more. It's to, you, you will then probably get a detox, refer to a detox. I had a home detox. I personally think a home detox is better than a one where they put you with other alcoholics. That's not very good at all, my personal opinion, because you're, they're putting you with other alcoholics. And that just ain't going to work at all. I've known a lot of people to go uh, into this kind of detox and they... He, they, they go a year without drink and then there is one lad around Canley, I'm not sure if he's still alive, but um, a lot of people don't know who I'm on about. He's detoxed a few times and uh, went back on drink, but he's, he's always in the, um, you know, I keep forgetting the name of the detox, but it's, it's where you put in a house in the city centre and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not good. It's good to a certain extent, but you need people around you who are... Some of the people in them detoxes generally don't want to stop. They uh, chip off to the pub and that, like, and have a sneaky drink and that. That's not a detox. The detox I had was... Um, uh, d then when I'm actually ready for my detox, they give you a, a specific date. They obviously speak to my parents first, if they're suitable, they were. And um, so they say, all right, on the Monday, you start your detox. But up until the detox, the good news, you're allowed to drink whatever you want, you know, but try and cut down a tiny bit. Uh, but on a day of the detox, you're not meant to drink at all. I did, I was nervous. So I drank about half a pint, so a strong side of Frosty Jacks. And uh, thereon, I had uh, 18 t uh, 16 tablets, yeah, four fours, four, you know, uh, and it was, they zombify off, I'm not sure the name, but I think they're called Librium, or something like that. And they completely zombify my mum and dad, are asking if I'm okay, reassuring me everything's going to be okay. And that night, I thought, oh, this is great, you know, even though you're not with it. You don't really sleep because you ain't done nothing through that day. But it feels great. You feel as if you're out of prison. But I still had half of a bottle of a one litre, so it's a, a pint of uh, Frosters still under my um, mattress, which I hid. And well, that's what I did. I drunk it. That was the last ever time I actually drunk cider or any strong beer, anything. Uh, I don't know why I did it, but I did. I think it was just the fact of wasting alcohol. I think uh, it was weird. But anyway, the next day, the nurse came round, she breathalyzed me, see if I've been drinking, and it came up negative. I know, because all that time I brushed my teeth and that, that, that whatever. And, um, so it went on from there, and the third day I thought, I said to my dad, I'm bored. Uh, you know, three on three days, all I was doing is uh, watching YouTube, I was a weird kind of uh, comedy, I love comedy. It keeps me alive, comedy does. And um, I was watching uh, Vic Reeves and Bob Moore of things, different projects, what they've done, and there's one in general, uh, in particular called uh, Vic and Bob's. Afternoon Delight, it's a must watch. <laughs> um, but I watched a lot of Strutter and things like that. You always have to, if you detox and watch comedy, I'm not joking. It's my personal opinion, and um, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, I think, or I've done good. But uh, comedy's helped me, I'm not joking. A lot of people, like other counsellors, tell you. Don't touch the pubs. Don't go. No, don't socialise with drinkers or anything like that. My personal opinion, that's not true either. Because um, I, I have always been hanging about with drinkers. But don't, don't hang about with the old drinkers what you used to. Because you were, 
guarantee you will start drinking. I.e. the drinkers in the cider drinkers out in the street, you will definitely start drinking again. I'm not joking. I haven't hung about with any of them. The drinkers I mean are the ones, you know, socialising in the pubs, um, playing poker, do something fun. Don't just, don't sit at a table talking. Never sit at a table talking on your first, just after you stop drinking. You have to do something, playing poker, chill out with young lads, like I did, like my brother's football teammates. and uh, I loved it, it was brilliant. And they were saying how oh, great I even though I was very skinny. I'm not the fattest person now, but I'm not skinny. I was I was like a <laughs> crackhead. I really was like a crackhead before. But um it so it worked out great. Uh, and uh I've been writing loads of scripts. I was told by someone to start doing theatre for some reason. I that's a bit strange. Oh. So uh, I joined Teatro Theatre in Leamington. It's the best thing I've ever done. The confidence booster in that was amazing. You shit yourself at the start, just being in a group, never mind being on stage. Just being in that little room, rehearsal room, scary. But you, you do stupid things, like you do like a tick and shit like that, like all in a group, and that's how you think it's stupid. But you you notice there's an energy coming out of you because you're doing stupid things with adults and you're just like, well. So then you're next week, which I thought, I thought, I thought, I didn't go for a week. I ended up doing it nine months. And uh, now, uh, there's a uh, one, just, uh, I'm in bedroom now and I can see the theatre from here. It's called Players Theatre, uh, Wheat Sheaf Players Theatre, Viking. It's great. Even though I've, I've only watched a little bit and I'm sure they're a great bunch. I've met a couple of lads and there's some of the girls there. And I'm going to start going there. Now I've got a... Well, it's good hours now. I'm working at UYT. And it's... Uh, anyway, um, I've been working every single day since I stopped drinking. Well, since I stopped drinking. There was one stage uh, where I was contemplating drinking. And that was uh, the first summer in March. Even though I did actually... I was... It, I, st- I, I drunk some uh, Alco Pops for the night with my cousin. And um, but for, I got told by someone, if you just get that one night over and done with, then all your doubts are done. And I woke up in the morning, I feel like, I felt like shit. But I never drunk a lot. So I, I didn't want the hair of the dog, if you know what I mean. So therefore I never drunk again. And... Because I felt shit again, it brought back bad memories, it, and now, and then straight after done, I thought, I'm never ever going to drink again, and I kept on my word. Right? <laughs> um, but you've just got to keep your mind occupied and occupied and occupied, but not in a boring way. Don't do something you don't want to do, do you know, really, like golf, I fucking hate that. I played it with my brothers and my cousin, and my dad. I just didn't like it. Uh, it's too serious, but keep your mind occupied. I've got a missus now, uh, Sylvia, she's the most beautiful thing in the world, and my baby daughter, Maya. They've both kept me occupied. I get nagged by Gasu, and the little one, she's just like a bundle of joy, she's so funny. But all together, it's amazing. It's better than what I was doing anyway. Um, I really, really stress that, uh, give it a couple of months, no, not even a couple, just uh, after a few days of uh, them tablets they give you, you will feel sobriety, but you, you will have your bumpy parts, which uh, is, you know, it's the limbo and chaos of things, you, uh, you will have them bumpy rides after you stop drinking, but... The majority of them are amazing. It's a freedom you can't explain. It's like heaven. I'm not exaggerating either. Um, there should be more awareness about alcohol, really. Uh, about the effects of it, what could do to people mentally, and why people become alcoholics. Some people don't become alcoholics, they were born with it. 
It was in my brain. It's kind of weird to say, but alcoholics are not, will never ever be responsible drinkers. Never, they can never learn an alcoholic to be a responsible drinker. Never, ever, ever. If anyone's actually you know, said they are, that's a load of bullshit. They either were an alcoholic in the first place, or uh, they just don't exist. <laughs> Simple as. Like, but I've uh, for the last three years have been amazing for me. They really have. Uh, I've never felt so alive. Well, I've got my family back, my brothers, sisters, cousins, aunties, uncles, nieces, and nephews, friends, and family. My mum and dad, most of all. Uh, it's been great. The only thing I haven't been doing is getting fit. I've got to start getting fit. Because I'm always tired. It's down to laziness, I think. Uh, another thing is, I. Uh, do a lot of things. Um, I I'm not saying this is essential, but I read the Bible and I do go through. I do go by a lot of what it says. I.e., just be just be a good person. Be honest. Don't be greedy. Uh, just put people before yourself sometimes. Don't be selfish. And good things will come to you if you uh, if you go by these little rules, Christian rules. Some people disagree with it, but okay. You gotta have an open mind. You gotta be more open minded. Be more creative. I do script writing as well. I write movies. They're all on um, Twitter. They're on a uh, uh, Twitter. I'm follow will, twenty two. Follow will is in the Kings Leon follow will band. Uh, that's all their surnames, they're all brothers. Uh, 22. Some of, some of my things are also, oh, you're probably watching it on YouTube. Uh, there will be more of these videos. If someone is struggling with alcohol and that, just watch this. Um, I've got to press this button, my battery's going. Anyway, I've got to go, the battery's about to die. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, I'm on Facebook, James Cooney, just add me. And uh, whatever, I had anyone.